Now, here's correspondent Micah Garrett with Made in America, tear gas on the streets of Cairo. Pro-democracy protesters are dying in Bahrain, in Yemen, and in Egypt. But it's not from what you might expect. They're dying from tear gas. This was uh, probably an unprecedented act in, in terms of uh, policing, in the history of policing. There has been instances in the past where tear gas was used very excessively in, in South Korea and in Northern Ireland. But what, what we had is a six-day continuous tear gas battle. That battle, which took place in November on the streets of Cairo, resulted in at least three confirmed deaths from tear gas, and possibly as many as 20. There were about uh, 21 count. Half of them was from suffocation from this tear gas. The U.S. is no stranger to using tear gas against peaceful demonstrators. And there is growing evidence that these riot control agents, marketed as a less lethal alternative to guns, are anything but safe. We believe that the gases can actually cause nerve damage. The pain sensing nerves that uh, get activated by this, they are activated so strongly that they define nerve endings in the skin or in the eye may be destroyed. What is also igniting people's anger on the streets of Cairo is that much of the tear gas is made in the USA. We have uh, approved previous licenses for the export of tear gas uh, to the Egyptian Interior Ministry. But what does that say then when you've got tear gas shipments arriving in the port of Suez with made in the USA on the side of them. We are shipping a huge amount of tear gas and other things to Egypt. I see no reason for that. The military had to start up again and ruin everything we built. And we're not standing for that, are we? No! We're not going to stand for it! A growing number of people are beginning to ask the question, why is the U.S. giving $1.3 billion annually in military aid to Egypt and selling tear gas to a government that is attacking peaceful pro-democracy demonstrators? A few days after the attacks on the protesters in Cairo, activists stage a sit-in on the street in front of the cabinet, trying to prevent the army-appointed Prime Minister Kamal Ganzori from taking office. Demonstrators recount their experience of having been tear-gassed and shot at. Through the whole five days, you can see hundreds of people are getting injured in front of your own eyes. Thousands of tear gas canisters were thrown in Mohammed Mahmoud Street. And you can imagine, it has been there for like five days, so you can imagine like, how was it in, in, in Tahrir? Some tear gas was pretty much tolerable. Other, like, other types of tear gas were just too much. You either faint, pass out completely. Some people had seizures, some people bled from their noses. Some people, they had difficulty breathing for like days after. The, the tear gas they were using were completely different from the, from the tear gas we've exposed to during January and uh, February. In January and February, we're, we used uh, vinegar and onions to like to put away the effect but it didn't make any difference this time. I saw people like throwing up blood from their mouths because of the tear gas. Whenever there is fighting, volunteer medical professionals set up makeshift emergency clinics to help the wounded. They also encountered unusual symptoms from the tear gas, including burns, convulsions, suffocation, and even death. The first revolution was the first case uh, there was, the, the case was not so dangerous like, uh, like what we see now. We could handle the case, we could give them the medical cures that they need, but with this gas, the, the, the cases come with very dangerous situations. The people who stand there at the front lines uh, told me uh, that uh, the people around uh, suffer from involuntary movements. The patient cannot control what he is doing, okay, with the hands and with the feet. I saw uh, one case who died in front of me because of suffocation. So why did people suffer so badly from the tear gas? Was it the way that the gas was used? Or was it something about the gas itself? It's not just a violation of uh, the rules of policing or of right control. This was intended to inflict harm and it led to a lot of deaths and it was definitely a criminal act. Kareem Inara is a researcher with the Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights. He's documenting the cases of tear gas exposure to get some answers. Most of the testimonies, there was uh, four or five tear gas canisters being fired every between one and four minutes. And that went on nonstop for 
five days and a half. And tear gas and riot control agents in general are supposed to be used to disperse violent riots. The use was not legitimate because it wasn't a violent protest and it was not intended to break up the protest. It was actually used as a punishment. This is what our investigation has led us to believe. It was, it was essentially the police waging a battle against the protesters. Kareem has collected numerous samples of tear gas canisters used against demonstrators, which he plans to test for chemical composition. But so far, he has not figured out a way to ship the samples out of the country. There were some concerns about the kind of tear gas being used. The only evidence we have is that CS, the one that's produced by Combined Tactical Systems, and other variants of CS produced by other companies have been used. And we've seen a lot of different kinds, six or seven different kinds of unmarked canisters which we assume some of them are probably the locally produced one because our military uh, produces tear gas as well. Or maybe they've just other kinds that are imported from other countries that don't have the specifications on the canisters. Kareem's efforts have also been stymied by the lack of research available uh, on tear gas. At Yale University, Dr. Sven Eric Yort is the only academic researcher in the United States actively working on tear gas. These chemicals, they are extremely reactive, they are corrosive, they, they react with proteins in the skin. So uh, you get a permanent modification of the tissue and a, and a wound repair response. It's, it's like a uh, burn injury or like a, a smoke inhalation injury. It's, it's very similar. Dr. Yort was given a grant from the Department of Health and Human Services to find an antidote for tear gas in the event of a terrorist attack. Uh, the tear gas most commonly used nowadays is CS uh, tear gas. This is uh, chlorobenzaldine malononitrile. And a much more potent agent, CR, was developed, but it's, it's currently not in use. There were some suspicions it was used in Egypt recently, but those have not been confirmed. The initial tear gases were developed during the First World War and partially uh, deployed as, as very severe irritants against, against the enemy. So they were developed as a, as a chemical weapon. Gas is being used in this war. Hence, if no gas shelter is immediately available, go indoors and go upstairs. The gas at that higher level will probably be less concentrated than down near the ground. It was also used uh, heavily in the Vietnam War, for example, to, to flush out Viet Cong from, from tunnels. Chemical weapons were first banned under the Geneva Protocol in 1925, and later the Chemical Weapons Convention of 1993. Under pressure from the United States, tear gas, which was considered a chemical weapon, was exempted from the treaties for domestic use. While it is illegal to use tear gas as a weapon during war, it can be used as a riot control agent on a civilian population. Egypt is one of only six countries that have not signed the Chemical Weapons Convention and is one of a handful of countries that is suspected of having used chemical weapons in the last 50 years. But deaths from tear gas don't just happen in the Middle East. In the United States, the FBI raided the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, Texas in 1993, resulting in a fire that killed over 75 people. Tear gas canisters are also being fired directly at protesters, causing injuries that can be fatal. What happened? What happened? You got hit. Oh, you got shot. Name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? I also have personal experience with tear gas. I've been exposed myself when I was a student demonstrating in Germany against uh, nuclear uh, fuel transports. It's like drowning, where you develop really high anxiety and, and, and panic. It was really terrifying. My goal is to find something to, to treat people that, that have been exposed. So, uh, the CS gas can, can certainly uh, disintegrate to form some, some cyanide, so there may be traces of cyanide that are generated. And this, this could, in, in some instances, uh, cause death. For crowd control in demonstrations where people have not committed violent acts or anything, I, I, I would not recommend this. This is uh, totally asymmetric and very, and, and very dangerous, I think. While it remains unknown whether other gases were used, it is likely that the prolonged exposure to CS gas in the narrow streets of Cairo would have resulted in sickness and suffocation, and the burning of CS gas may have led to cyanide poisoning. Since the fall of Mubarak in February, three large shipments of tear gas have been sent from the United States to Egypt. On November 26, just after the tear gas battles in Cairo, a shipment of 21 tons of tear gas arrived in the port of Suez, a shipment authorized through export licenses granted by the State Department. 
So, so that's you're my saying understanding as there well. are companies that can now send tear gas and they don't have to ask? They are because operating of, under existing licenses. That is my understanding. If that's wrong, I'll let you know. But that's okay. And those and those aren't being reviewed in any way. Those, uh, I'll, I'll, again, I, I think we would if if we had strong evidence that the tear gas was being misused. As I said, we would uh, we would uh, reconsider. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not aware that that's happening. The State Department answered questions about tear gas during a daily press briefing, but declined our request for an interview. One of the main American manufacturers of tear gas and a supplier to Egypt is Combined Tactical Systems, based in Jamestown, Pennsylvania. They are a producer of less lethal riot control items, including chemical munitions, pepper spray, and launchers. The shipment of tear gas that arrived in Suez on November 26 came from Combined Tactical Systems. Five Egyptian customs officials tried to prevent the shipment from entering the country. Medhat Essa is the husband of one of the customs officials. He is also a TV presenter and a member of the Suez Revolutionary Youth Coalition. Fearing retribution, neither his wife nor the other four customs officials would speak publicly, so Medhat brought the issue to the media. When my wife figured out that the shipment contained tear gas bombs, she refused to finish the paperwork. And her colleagues at the office stood in solidarity with her. It says here, exported to the Ministry of Interior, on board the ship Marianne Danica. And the exporting company is called Combined Systems, Inc. And the shipment sailed from Wilmington, North Carolina. Some of the activists who are involved with the unions here communicated with the port workers in the United States. They asked them to stand in solidarity with us Egyptians. Egyptian and American activists are finding common ground. The recent shipments of tear gas and the $1.3 billion in annual military aid to Egypt have become rallying cries for some in the Occupy movement. We are planning uh, to demonstrate our solidarity with the Egyptian revolution by calling attention to the fact that the U.S. military is currently bankrolling the Egyptian military as it kills peaceful protesters. In Midtown Manhattan, protesters stage a mock tear gas die-in at the offices of Point Lookout Capital Partners, the primary investor in combined tactical systems. We have friends who are in Egypt who said, one thing you could do to help us is this. I think right now the tear gas thing really strikes a chord with people in America. All of a sudden, you know, middle class and college kids across the country are getting brutalized with it. He's crying, not another nickel, not another dime, no more money for the war, he's crying, not another nickel. On the same day as the protest in Manhattan, a handful of demonstrators also appeared at the Combined Tactical Systems Office in Pennsylvania. They were turned away quickly by state police. Combined systems, how can I help you? I'm calling with HDNet World Report. Combined Tactical Systems declined repeated requests for an interview and wouldn't return our phone calls.
You need to speak to Don Smith. I will have to transfer you to his voicemail. Okay, but Don Smith isn't returning my phone calls. If if you left him a message, he will contact you if he if he wants to return your call. But some in Congress seem to have gotten the message. I want to make sure the military realizes nobody gets a blank check. In a move that has upset the State Department, Senator Patrick Leahy, a Democrat from Vermont, introduced language about tear gas into the recently passed omnibus spending bill. The bill requires a new level of transparency about sales of tear gas to countries in the Middle East and North Africa undergoing democratic transition. It also puts conditionality on military aid to Egypt based on meeting human rights standards. Why are we shipping so much uh, anti-crowd control, anti-riot kind of material there, especially when all that so well stamped with made in the USA, are we, are we seeing as surrogates for the military? Do you believe it's in some sense hypocritical for the U.S. to be trying to support fledgling democracies in the Arab world while at the same time providing some of the crowd control and riot control means to these countries? Is that what's concerning? Well, we, we, we supplied uh, police departments in the past and other parts of the world for what would be used in, in police departments here in the United States. But there's a big difference between that and just going in shooting at people. And we've seen how sometimes these things can be misused. We saw one of our university campuses here in the United States, an outrageous a display of using pepper gas. Outside the Egyptian cabinet building, symbolic coffins are placed in front of the gate, one coffin for each demonstrator killed the previous week. On December 5th, Egypt's interior minister declared that security forces would not use tear gas again against civilians. But less than two weeks later, the military brutally attacked the sit-in in front of the cabinet, driving demonstrators into Tahrir Square, where they were severely beaten and shot. And reports are that tear gas was once again used. Senator Leahy's efforts have received praise from groups such as Amnesty International, but the State Department still has the final word. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton finally spoke out last week condemning the violence. This systematic degradation of Egyptian women dishonors the revolution and is not worthy of a great people. But few expect that the $1.3 billion in annual military aid will be cut off. With recent images of women being attacked by soldiers, it seems even less likely that Egyptian security forces will change their pattern of violence anytime soon.